Yes. Hey everybody, welcome to Massive Chalice Team Stream number 16. Thanks for joining us. We're gonna just jump right into it. Got anything else to say about that? I'm stoked. We've been, <laughs> we've been working on a video game. Yeah. So, we're gonna start it off with... Let's shut this video game down. We'll show you that more in a minute. Um, hey, welcome to Team Stream once again. Art director Andy Wood, concept artist Derek Brand. Hey. Hello. Hey. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk about the fifth environment first. So our fifth environment, we, I think, I believe we've shown all four of the other ones. So this is the last one. Uh, we're just calling this one the Alpine map. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Um, so this was the er, initial exploration of this. We talked a lot about, since the playable space is flat, that uh, cliffs look really sweet. So it's like, what if we did a map that was all cliffs? Right. <laughs> Is that, I mean, that's, that was really it, right? That's it was like cliffs. It. And, then, and then Andy, you were like, uh, I've heard that you have an affinity for white birches. And you were like, what about white birches? And we're like, sweet. That would be really cool. cool. So we made a video game that had a white birch in it. Um, and I, the thing that I really liked was that you found a bunch of reference that had um, the super autumn -y, yeah, those really Bright saturated oranges orange, and yellows and like, stuff. They look amazing. And it looks amazing yeah. on, you know, you have this great, like, uh, contrast of, like, all the leaves in the trees, all the leaves on the ground, and then, like, the stark white yeah. birch trees sticking Black up. And and trunks it and just stuff. looks amazing. It looks so good. So, yeah. Derek, this was, your, uh, this was your first stab at it. Yeah. And so these yeah. are, you do these really quick, right? These are, yeah, like, these your, are, these are pretty what, what do you call these? These are, like... I guess they're, like, uh, roughs, I guess. They're roughs. Yes. Dude, you yeah. learn something every day. So you just do these roughs. It's not quite a thumbnail, but it's not quite a... <laughs> oh, a thumbnail is yeah. rougher than a rough? Yeah. And yeah. then what's after a rough? The next image is... I don't... Uh, is, those are sort of rough. Is still Everything rough? I do... Uh, <laughs> 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 so this was, this was, this was another... These are um, rough artists. This was a, just... like another rough, another, another take on the environment. Yeah. And really exploring, like, like one of the, the coolest ideas we had was the, like, oh, like, what if the keep... For, for this region was like actually down. It was like built downward into the cliffside. And it's like, hey, that looks pretty cool. You can see like the flags over here and it's like, oh, there's like the windows and stuff. So you're actually fighting on top of it and you're kind of running around on top of it and that's pretty awesome. We also have some of these kind of Moai head um, kind of things yeah. Yeah. going on, which I really like. I like and them a lot. And that was, um, somebody threw that out when we were brainstorming and it was like, yeah, that's like a really cool way of adding some mystery to it mm -hmm. and then also getting it um, to feel really old so that you see these things, we don't really explain them. They're just kind of like there. Uh, they look ancient. They give it a you know mysterious, weird feel, and, and that's cool. Because um, I I had just been to um, the Papua New Guinea, um, what do they call it, the Papua New Guinea Garden in, in Stanford campus. It's awesome. Just tons of these really cool wooden sculptures, kind of in the midst of trees. That's right. And yeah, um, it, yeah. yeah, if anybody gets a chance to check that out, it's super cool. And then this was kind of like the final um, the final image that you did after some revisions. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like a, oh, what do you call this? Is this a call out? It's a call out of the heads. I, I just really wanted to paint the heads like, really bad. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just gonna do it. Um, but it was also, I thought, really great that this one was done more in perspective. You know, more top down, more in perspective. Really getting the feeling of like the the cool cliffs and and also like a bit of gameplay here with the you know yeah. having this cool U turn here and like some cool things that we can do with the cliffs. And and we really wanted to focus on. Um, the cliffy, narrow levels uh, for like like layouts, and then also go between wide open sections and then uh, like densely forested sections, and that you know that we could just contrast those two mm -hmm. very uh, greatly. So like here, you know, this is like a big kind of open section of the map, and then this is where it gets like really dense and forested, and and that'll have just kind of present different tactical challenges within the same level. I really love how the yellow texture kind of bleeds down from the Yeah, the it flows mountain. down the hill. It looks That's awesome. super cool. Um, so let's check that out in the game. So we started with uh, the test map, uh, for lack of a better term, and this was just like to get the art, to get the art rolling, right? It was like, hey, what can this look like, and how can we uh, present this negative space? Um, yeah, so we talked about the, the ones for the other regions, right? So each each region we did a test map where we just played around with the art and we weren't really worrying too much about the actual gameplay space. It and, was just like a test. and these are primarily done for um, just to get the look of the level down. So um, gameplay-wise, we weren't too concerned about it. We just wanted to make sure that like 
this cliff, uh, kind of the cliff idea was going to read, that these heads were going to look cool. That the camera work spinning around, like that was a big... Right, and that was a big thing. I mean, on the cliff side, it's actually very easy. And it's not a big deal because you can just float the camera out here and it's like, this is one of the... Yeah. The, it's not even a problem. I was going to say it's one of the easiest problems we had, but it's not, it's even, not a even a problem. It's not even a problem. It doesn't even qualify. But then we make up for it Does on the it, other wall. We right? totally so do because we, we want it to feel like a big, thick mountainside yeah. uh, on the other side. And it does actually give you significant challenge. Um, yeah. It actually, we ended up doing a kind of like uh, plateau almost. It goes up and it has like a plateau feeling to it. Um, camera box. Yeah, so that plateau is kind like of. This is uh, a great example of it right here. Yeah, basically that plateau shows you where our camera lives. You wouldn't normally think about it, probably right. when you're playing on an open map, but. Yep. When you see this, then you can see really where the camera lives. And but it, it does give you a really nice um, shot of the, uh, you know, it, it has an almost sheer, sheer cliff feeling to it when you look at it from, from this side. Right. Um, but then, yeah, when you flip it around, it's like the only real way, way to make it work is to slice it out up here. Yep. And it's like, I don't think that people are going to notice, you know? I mean, it's still going to get the... I think most of the time people will flip the camera and play it from this perspective. Right. Um, it just needs to be able to support this perspective and let people uh, do that. It's just, yeah, it, I think that it, I think that it worked out fine. And then you can see this. This is the sort of like forested test section here. Um, lots of like tight quarters and, and blocking line of sight as much as we can. Um, we were just that, talking about how cool the shadows from those leaves on the trees are. Yeah, they look super awesome. We need to like, do a lot more of that. I'm not sure who built those trees. Jeremy made Did them. Did Jeremy make those? Yeah. Man, Jeremy shout out. Um, yeah. But they do such a great job and if you look at them here, you know, they actually, I love those floating polygons. Yeah. It it's funny, I'd move the mouse up here to point it out, but like yeah, because yeah. of our alpha, it's like they go away, you can't actually do it. Um, but, uh, but you can see them there at the top of the screen and it's like, yeah, those cool floating polygons really give you like a nice, a nice kind of look. So, um, so yeah, like I thought this was really successful. The color palette's awesome. It sets it apart from the other levels. Um, it's really great. The heads totally work. Um, we have really tall ones. Uh, we have ones that are built into the, the pants of the level, like into the cliffs. I really like too the ones that are kind of floating out in space. Yeah. Ooh, this guy is the that's the wrong guy. Yeah. <laughs> but I think some of these other ones, like if I can reveal the fog of war over here, you'll see it. Nope. Um, <laughs> there are some in the real map that are uh, super, super tall and long, and they work really well, kind of like just being these weird mysterious, you can just kind of see this guy's head right here. Yeah. Oh no, that's another one of those. <laughs> I, think, I think the mesh, the model might have changed when we did the changes to that's, the real map. So. Yeah, yeah, that's, so we'll see it. Um, so this was just, you know, this real small test map, but we've been working on uh, the O1 maps, is what we've been referring to, to them as. So these are kind of the, the very first versions of all of these. And so these have way less art polish on them. So you can see that like, you know, the cutout, the, the real harsh cutout of the playable space going around here, um, this was just quickly done. Um, you know, if I turn on this view, these are the actual pit blockers that kind of define the edge of the map um, that are invisible. And then normally, you know, uh, that, that just kind of defines the playable space. And then Andy, you went in there and just sliced that out when we were kind of done. Um, but when John and I were, were like working on this map, we kind of kind of had to, to, to keep this view up yeah. the whole time, just to like make sure that like the, the space made sense and stuff. Um, but then you sliced out the floor and it's like, okay, great, like this, this looks like it's gonna work. Um, and I'm just gonna quickly run around this map. So this is, we're trying to actually like get something that would, that would feel shippable. Um, whoops. You know, just really trying to check the, the scale and the, of course, this is, I, I picked the guy with asthma. <laughs> yeah, asthma. asthma is our most debilitating trait right now, <laughs> which, as an asthmatic, I find it's, true to life it's super and amazing. also a little dis, dis, discomforting. So, which all, we, we have to do a big pass on the traits, but it does show that negative traits can be an interesting thing in the game because you're like, no, not you, not you too. <laughs> so, this Don't was something that worked out, um, just being able to, to create a sense of place even just in this, you know, pretty simple white box level by dropping in, you know, these heads in a circle, it gives you a nice gameplay space with like, you know, you can see the, the line of sight being blocked when a character's in the middle. Um, and it just, yeah, it just- And you always feel like you're space. being watched. Um, there's also, I just put in all of these uh, tall, tall blockers to kind of represent that cliff side. 
those will be replaced with like what you saw in the, uh, the actual clip. Yeah, I'm just working on that now and, and I have a wall in there that kind of works, but um, getting all of the distances and the camera box just right takes a little bit of tweaking. And we also thought that these, these two by two mediums have a nice feel to them. Yeah. Um, so we'll probably uh, come in and make a custom piece, either a head or a big rock that kind of fills that space. Um, and then, you know, these forested areas are a little bit bigger than what you saw on the test map. Um, it feels and, good though. Uh, I like this. Yeah, this. I, I think that these turned out really well. These kind of these kind of tight forest areas. Uh, I, I think it has a nice sort of like you know you want you want to bring your caber jacks in in the forest and you want to have your like hunters in the um, in the other areas is good. Also experimenting with like how does it feel to have this this like really tight kind of blocked off extension. This was. Um, Unfortunately, it looks a bit like a penis when you look at it from the top view. Um, it just happens sometimes. I don't know. In designing maps, like sometimes it just goes in there. You see, it, it curves up just a little bit, right? Just get out to the edge. There. Accidental, I'm sure. Accidental, accidental penis. Um, but it's you know like it, it gives it this a really interesting like extension off of the map and. It just gives it like a different feature um, for it. And you can see these heads going down. And these are these are the ones, um, I think these are the appropriate ones. There's gonna be, do they need to be stretched down? We've gotta figure out what Even to longer. do with that. I think we need to get our fog plane and all that in and then we just right. build what we wanna build. I was thinking that this area would be cool if we made uh, solid stuff at the end and solid stuff at the wall and then maybe do an, an arch, like a rock arch or something like that. So you yeah, could see awesome. under it. Cool, cool. Oh, so down, built down all, here in this yeah, area. Yeah, I guess I built it all solid and it looks yep. a bit too mechanical, so it might be nice to yep. punch that out. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, there's also a section back here. Yeah, there should be bridges that, there. That we modified. I did that, those and they actually look really cool. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, this section here, yeah. it didn't get punched out again. You can see that. it there. But I mean, that's like a super quick thing. But the idea was to have like two paths here. Um, with, with short bridges that kind of connect this thing. Also give you some more negative space uh, throughout the map and just kind of create another sort of landmarky thing. It's pretty cool. I think if we do cool bridges as well, it'd be, it'd be Sweet. Uh, so, a good landmark. So yeah, this, um, this is really the, the size and feel of a final shipping map that we want to have in the game. Um, this will be the one that we actually use as the seed for all of the other Alpine maps. You know, it has that real narrow, kind of linear feel to it. Um, and yeah, and that actually brings me to this other thing. Um, we had this, so this, this came out of our sort of like trying to nail down the look and the feel of each of the regions, both from a visual, visual direction, but also from a design direction. So um, after some discussions, John made uh, this, uh, this diagram. And so we were just looking at the Alpine thing, so it's really, you know, we really want it to feel like super linear and, and be narrow, very narrow and then have those forests be the things that are like really tight and block the sight lines. Um, the, the salt stacks, it's like we want those to be arenas that are kind of connected by bridges like this, like we've shown that before. The mangrove um, have the most, I, I think that like this Swiss cheese feeling I thought was very cool where it's like it's mainly one large space but then there are like the small pools that are kind of dotted throughout it that create a more nonlinear feeling. Um, for the desert, it's mainly one large um, chunk, and then also having these um, kind of alcove things. And this is, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit later, maybe on the next stream or the one after that. Um, this part is not working super well, and you saw the um, the wang in that alpine level that we just that we just showed off. And you know, this this tidal desert basically has just a bunch of wangs that hang off of it. And unfortunately, those are like, you know, they're dead ends. Uh, you're going to send your party in there, you're going to clear out whatever's in there, and then you have to move them, you know, one at a time all the way back out. It's not super fun. It's not the best thing ever. So what we might do is hook a lot of these wangs back onto the, um, uh, back onto the main kind of drag so that you can go in, clear it out, and then pop out the other side, and you still feel like you're exploring and stuff. So it would almost be like there are a lot of like hooked areas or like curved areas mm -hmm. that loop back on themselves. Um, I think it's weird that it, it makes it a little bit more like this mangrove thing. Um, but we also have this other feature of these exploding barrels. We'll get to those, like we have these exploding cactuses. The, the blockers in that one are also above the ground. And right. the, the holes in the mangrove are, mm -hmm. and that, are and not that really, should really a blocker. Help give so it, it's a different, give it a different feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
But I think it'll also be more interesting if it is does feel like you know one big large kind of open area with the hook small kind of almost hallway like alcovey things that hook around you know that compared to the the mega I think that will also give it like a different feel to it and then for the black sands looking for like really huge are people talking about things? wings you, you guys everybody <laughs> just talking about wings <laughs> it doesn't take much um, it doesn't <laughs> take much that's true what is um, Andy while you're here what is the preferred British term for a wang. We have so many. I know. Like, English, English is willy? all about euphemisms. Would, pe would anyone use the term willy? Yeah. Uh, okay. Probably not so much these days. It depends. Uh, I mean, knob? Is, knob would work, That's, yeah. Is that one kind of... That's a bit old. Crude? Yeah, oh, it's no, old, okay. It's not that crude. There's, right. there's a ton at about the same level. Todger. <laughs> Maybe Todger. Oh, <laughs> that's Todger with <laughs> a T. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know if I've ever heard that one. Fantastic. So we're going to put more Todgers onto this uh, <laughs> desert map. Um, and then the Black Sands, the last one. So for this, we thought it would be great to have like huge, large um, blockers that break up the space that are vertical. Um, and then uh, so the rest of the map would be pretty open, but it would be um, filled with the, uh, the geysers. that, And I think we've shown those on the team stream. Basically, they're um, low blockers or, or just completely open blockers right now, the way we're messing around with it. And then they become tall blockers um, when, you know, periodically. So. That, yeah, hopefully these five, we're, we're kind of using this uh, simple kind of design shape language to, to guide the creation of all of those maps. And yeah, that's great. We actually have, so we showed the, the O1 version yep. of um, the Alpine one. We actually have O1 versions. We're not going to show them all right now. But we have O1 versions for all five of the areas. And we also have our first um, kind of indoor keep map. Um, but we got to move on. We gotta move on to other Moving stuff. On. So um, we've been doing a lot of exploration of like of UI and then also um, uh, talent tree stuff, like and the the whole hero. What do we call this thing? Hero inspection. Hero. I don't know. What we call this. Hero management. Yeah, screens. it's like it's like when you when you get into the details of your hero, like this is the main screen that you're that you're presented with. And our, our current thinking is that it's this tab view where you can see um, the skill tree of the hero, you can see their equipment, and you can also see kind of like detailed statistics and information. Um, and that this would be like a simple tab thing. So you click on the equipment, it would change this whole this whole deal. Click on the info, it changes this whole deal. These are permanent, uh, basically. And you can get to this screen from um, uh, the retinue. You can get it get to it on the tactical view. This is kind of like you're you're constantly coming in here, and you get a nice big representation of your character all the time. Um, so this was the first stab for uh, man, the man, McMahon. Um, and it gives you, you know, it gives you like their level, um, their class, their age, um, how many skill points they have. This is their sigil. Um, this is like the primary color and the secondary color on this. Um, and then give you, you know, let you kind of decide what skills you're going to pick as you go through the skill tree. This is representative right now of uh, kind of our, our thinking for the skill tree is that you're going to get a skill point on every even level. We'll have 10 levels in the game. Um, so you have five tiers. Is that right? Yep. All right, good. Um, <laughs> you have five <laughs> tiers. Um, so this is the kind of primary active skill for each hero here. Um, and then you'll have a choice of passives, a choice of actives, a choice of passives, and then a final passive for the hero um, that you get at the at level 10. Um, and that's, you know, actives versus passives. That will that will get, you know, as we, as we iterate and stuff, some will change. Yep. And that, that's... That's just kind of like the basic guiding formula for it. Um, but yeah, do you want to, you want to say anything about this? It's, I mean, you I know, a lot of the, the kind of UI things that we've shown um, before are like present here, like really mm -hmm. light area yeah. UI, a lot of negative space, a lot of alpha, um, trying to stay away from the pewter dragon as yeah. much as possible, um, wood screws, and you know, all <laughs> yeah. sorts of uh, physical heavy kind of like uh, overbearing, overwhelming UI, like we're trying to stay away from it and just make it feel very, um, I don't know. Yeah, I think just stumbling mm -hmm. on the, the the squares and triangle or diamond yeah. shape theme too is something that we got from this. Yeah, because um, there was a lot of exploration before this, but this was. Yep. Yeah. It seems very cool. Um, yeah. Smile says diamonds are a nice choice, nice angles. Really nice like angles. So nice as angles. soon as you put that screen up, people are talking about it. So Sweet. Cool. Sweet. So, um, so this was, oh, actually. Yeah, these are like the, the earlier, one? yeah. This was actually iterations. the first one that we looked at. And, and um, we all kind of liked that big, that big diamond that we were just showing. Ah, I showed them out of order. It's okay. That's it's good. Worst. It's yeah. nice to show the good yeah. one. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the, yeah, yeah. And then this is sort of like, hey, this is the genesis of that. Um, yeah. 
Uh, there were a lot of, like, this This structure was the one that we liked the best. Really compact, gives you a lot of room for the icons so that you can mm -hmm. see them, and, like, that's super rad. You see that the diamonds are a lot smaller in, in most of these other ones. Um, here, this one felt a little bannery, like we're trying to use those banners, <laughs> and it was, like, overly bannered, I think, <laughs> yeah. was the, uh, <laughs> the prevailing thing. Um, we also really like this, this structure here, you know, the, the big diamond here, and then also the, the more... Um, pennant looking banner here is like super cool for the sigil. Also having, uh, the sigils are always gonna be squares. So um, yeah, it just looks good when it's kind of centered with this cut like this, I don't know, super rad. Um, everybody liked this color palette more. Yeah. The, 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 warm the warmer tones. color palette yeah. really took it away from um, some of the more sci-fi feeling of the, right. of the blue. Feels a little bit tron -y over here, you know, want to avoid that as much as possible. And we also really like the texture on the banners that you can see like here. Um, again, it's another thing that, that really takes it away from feeling sci-fi and too graphic yeah. and kind of grounds it and gives it a little bit of, yeah. yeah, sweet. So this really quick was an idea of bringing those, those diamonds into the, um, into the skill bar when you're actually playing the game. So, all of the icons would be diamonds in the in the talent tree, and then they'd be uh, diamonds down here in your like uh, your active skills, and that's pretty cool. I yeah, like it. Could it. Work. Like it's different. It gives it um, it gives it a different look. Also, because you're isometric, it actually makes them kind of line up with the view. I just thought of that. Wow. I don't even yeah, know I if that, that makes more sense. Is that right? Because I mean, when we are at the forty degree angle or whatever, you are yeah. seeing diamonds yeah. rather than seeing squares all the time, and it's kind of nice. It's one of those subconscious things that you did, Derek. You didn't even think about it. You're just like, <laughs> yeah. damn, diamonds. Well, it's like, yeah, diamonds um, fit so well. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, see this, see this, see this effing yeah. diamond right here. Yep, there you go. Um, sweet. Uh, so now there were three sort of more um, like larger takes on it, and this was trying to flesh out like, okay, we've already looked yeah. at the skill tree, um, but what what does the equipment look like? Um, so this was a stab at like. Okay, this is your weapon, armor, and item slots, and like you know, clicking on those and cool. Like, like what can that look like? And then also um, your info tab with like all the traits for the character, and then any sort of like permanent buffs or debuffs that the character might have. Mainly, those are going to be temporary on the on the tactical view, but there might be some that are permanent that that kind of carry over. You'd be able to see that here, all their stats and all that stuff. So do you remember, um, this was take A, we have three of these. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there were notes, but I threw them away. <laughs> That's um, okay. They're all on the forums, yeah. uh, internal forums, and I can't remember if there are anything, maybe as we go through the other ones. I we think kinda... th this was uh, just trying to take uh, the top screen and then like iterating directly from that to make the right. other screen. Right, and that's just keeping keeping this cut out here, keeping yeah. this big diamond here, um, and making sure that the different tabs are, are, are gonna work mm -hmm. for that. Um, so here was B, and yeah. I think that yeah, this was an attempt at like uh, getting more info in each screen so that you could make more informed decisions when you're selecting your, your skills and stuff. Without actually having to go yeah. to the super detailed info tab, it's like you could actually have some stats and some things kind of like here on the, yeah. And it's interesting, it's just like, you know, you worry about information overload, like are we right. presenting like too much shit and too much text and yeah. ugh. Um, and it's like, you know, some people might not care and like that would, you know, for the people that do care, is it really that much of an inconvenience to go over to the info, look mm -hmm. at it, and come back and make your decision? I don't know. Yeah. Um, but this is cool, these, uh, these icons that you have here. The Cadence Crusher. Cadence Crusher, yeah. It's pretty sweet. Um, <laughs> uh, and then this was another awesome thing on the info screen of like maybe having uh, the like family tree, like yeah. seeing all the descendants and like being able to look. Also, um, one thing that's cool, the way that the uh, programmers set up our, our kind of character inventory is that um, character inventory that makes them sound like they're weird <laughs> items uh, but like all the characters that, that kind of sit in the retinue they're they're all in there no matter what even after they die like they maintain just they're just kind of sitting around mm -hmm. so you could easily click on that and actually look at the you know great yeah, grandfather awesome. of this character and like see it and, and whatever um, so that's a super rad idea. So this was another take on it. Yeah, this was to try to cut some of that information down a bit so that it's it's uh, an option. So like if you clicked on the the little square next to stats, it would rotate, turn into a diamond, and then below it, it would pop up all the information below it so that it wouldn't clutter everything up. But if you if you needed it, you could you could cool, find cool. it really quickly. Yeah, I think that's I think that's very slick. 
Um, and these are awesome seeing like the, you know, here's the, the XP of your relic. You see that? There's some other like stats on it. It's excellent. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is, this was again a, a very similar thing where you could collapse these as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it had extra information on all of those things. Yeah, that's really cool. And this is cool that this is like fully portable, this whole thing into the, um, into the tactical view. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, do we have any questions on that stuff? Nice. That was the end of that, yeah. Um, uh, Solar Blitz asked if. Um, I... uh, that guy's awesome. Yep. Solar Blitz, shout out. Uh, <laughs> he asked this. Where He's here this? all the time, man. That guy. He's asking um, would the interface color match the sigil um, colors? And I know we've talked we've, about that. We've, so talked, we've talked about, talked about that a couple bit. times, and it seems like like the, the concern would be if you had a like color oftentimes signifies some kind of information. Yeah, we need to really know how much information we're trying to sell with the color before we can make that decision I think because usually so there will like, be some part of it that does but how much I think is going to come down we, to how much we lean on color for important stuff throughout the whole because if you had a greenhouse right you know a greenhouse that's weird primary house primary color would be green you know and then, and then we everything have, would look awesome right? and then we have a <laughs> button that's like bad or unavailable, yeah. you'd be like, what, yeah. like, why is this, yeah. what's going on? And then conversely, if you had red, you know, that sometimes means like, no, you shouldn't click this, you can't click this right now, but it's, no, it's fine, you totally yeah. can. Um, so it's it's a cool idea to have that whole UI change colors, but. Um, yeah, I mean, we haven't yeah, really even nailed down the colors for the houses and things yet. So until we do that and we figure out what we're doing through the interface, I don't know that we can really decide. There'll be some, I think that's for sure. Uh, Valiant Cheese uh, reminded me that earlier people were wondering where the, the what the white dot represented. I think on the skill tree there's like a white dot with a line. Oh and yeah. It, you feel, do you think that might be dynamically updated or what, what are the current? Yeah, that would that? that would be selecting what row you're on of the skill. What step you're on? Yeah. Cool. And yeah. yeah that. So it would just okay. move down so, to the next row. Yeah. Yeah, that's just like whatever tier you're currently selected. Yeah. That would just be there, and then yeah. So it would kind of slide down. Mm -hmm. Just kind of yeah. show you. That's cool. Um, and there's also a lot of questions. Uh, Svelte Ar Armadillo asked more about the family tree. They really, a lot of people really stoked about seeing that on, on the screen there. And I, we're just playing with that idea, like how can we make that a pretty easy thing without having this giant, cluttered, huge family tree thing or right. a really, um, and so they asked like, um, yeah, like how far is it gonna go back and can you click on the family tree to view the heroes? And I know that in the simplest version as we've talked about is it would pretty much only need to show a character's kids and his parents. Right. And then and you then could you just, just click on it. those and it would take yeah. to you to their info screen and you'd see their yep. parents too. So you can kind of jump around in the family tree, but you wouldn't necessarily see a dynamic see the full, uh, Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, and I think that's a really great, um, a great way to do it in a compact way mm -hmm. um, so that you don't have, you know, something that you have to yeah. zoom in and scroll around. And, yeah. you know, it's like, I know that some games have <clears> done that and it just... It's a pretty big feature to actually have that thing like generated and yeah, have it imagine. scrolly and, and all that stuff, especially when you're talking about going, you know, five generations in, no, cool. have great, great, great yeah. grandfather it starts or something. Getting crazy. It's like, oh man, like it's, you know, this huge thing. And it's like, it's super cool. It's a game when you can like scroll around and be like, oh, but um, I think it's probably fine if, you, if we just have that. There's a cool suggestion that maybe you'd be able to see also like um, where Relic is from or you know, to kind of trace a path that a relic has gone, um, which might be cool too. Because I mean, you're going, you're going to get your relics from. I guess you could get it from another family member. So I don't know. Maybe there'd be a third category like parents, kids, and then relic, relic holders. holders. It, that would be a really know. awesome view of a relic to be like, oh look, here are all the people who have yeah. wielded it. Even yeah, if it's cool. just a linear yeah. succession of them, you're just like, oh cool, like there's so many people that have touched this. Gross. Like, uh. um, yeah. yeah, that's super cool. Um, oh, crap. I think we got to get showing the game. Yeah, I think we're I think yeah, we got to get showing the game. Going. So it's awesome. Um, I'm going to. Thanks for the questions. And we're going we're gonna to send you guys out of here. Yeah. Thanks for joining we're us. Out. Thanks for joining awesome. us. Awesome. Excellent drawings, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and pick somebody for the $100 slacker. Yes. Backer. Yeah, we're going to give away a uh, $100 tier of the game. Cool. So if you have been in chat or listening, be ready. I will announce it. 
Uh, our winner is Dirty Feet 33. <laughs> All right. Dirty Feet. Are you here? If you are, chat to me, and you have won a package. If you're already a backer, we'll let you give that to somebody else. Dirty Feet 33, um, amazing. Love it. And, is he uh, there? Uh, I hope he's we'll there. see. Hasn't chatted yet. We'll give him a minute. 60 second delay. And oh, 60, 60 second delay. delay. So. <laughs> Which means it's, yeah, this is weird. <laughs> weird. Okay, also really quick while we're waiting for Dirty Feet 33. Um, okay. Broken Age shipped last week, so that's cool. If you like yeah. adventure games, check it out. It's awesome. Get Act 1 now, you get the rest of the game later. It'll be sweet. Uh, hey, Thanks. we're being welcomed by Mr. Dan McGarry. Hi. Hey, welcome. Chat's coming. Welcome to the team stream. Hi. Well, that's great because we're going to jump right into the strategy layer. Oh, great. So you've been doing a lot of work on strategy layer lately. Mr. Mr. McGarry. Yeah. What do you have to say for yourself? Got a hot new map in there. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do that though. So you did not do that. But um, but yeah, we can talk about this for a minute. This is like you know our current kind of first uh, first take on like what the cadence could look like as it's you know surrounding the kingdom and choking it. And um, uh, probably once we take another pass at this, we'll have uh, Matt Enright, the graphics programmer guy. Uh, who did this stuff, um, and Panya, and they can like talk about it. But yeah, the, it's actually a dynamic system. Um, so if you see these fingers that are, that are these fingers of corruption that are coming in, um, when I start running the timeline, you'll actually see those kind of extend in yeah. uh, as the corruption goes up, uh, and the region becomes like more and more corrupted, and it's super rad. Um, so let's talk about new stuff. So we've got this, these nice like you know kind of placeholder pop-ups, like giving you some information about like the capital. Also, lots of awesome placeholder text. The <laughs> Chalice Palace, um, <laughs> the so capital. Proud then of we've that. got a couple of uh, empty, the empty strongholds. So these are going to be randomly given to you. Um, two of the five will, will be randomly given to you at start, and then the other the other three are in the infested state right now. So we'll go in here and check out. Actually, I don't want to go in there yet. I want to go to I want to go to the Chalice Palace. So. Um, so hey, this is awesome. This is some placeholder effects that we have uh, on the placeholder chalice, and it's, this is going to be your advisor, and they're going to be talking to you, and it's great. There's your mic right there. Um, so you can check out your retinue right now. So these are all the heroes that are uh, of age that you start out with. So one thing uh, that we've changed is that you can get heroes that go from levels uh, one to three early in the game, yeah. and it's like kind of rad that like, oh, look at Justin Dawson. Justin Dawson. Hey, Chad Dawson's here. This is your brother. Actually, wait, you know what we can do, which is totally rad. Okay, so Justin. you can just come to the level up right here. We did a ton of work, we'll get to this on tactics, we did a ton of work, um, Chad did a ton of, ton of work specifically on the Caber Jack's ability tree. Um, so his core active is this knockback attack, we'll get to that, but so cool, like this guy's level two, you get that at level two, check it out, awesome. You can check out his equipment, this is another thing that's gone in that we haven't shown. Um, so all of this is, is very placeholder. We're asking about but that in the chat. They were asking about equipment. Well, you have an equipment screen. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah you absolutely will. Um, and all of these are like placeholder items and stuff, but um, you know, we're planning about nine or ten items in the game, um, several different pieces of equipment or of armor for the characters, uh, mainly like their upgrades, and then the cadence armor. We showed that on the last team stream, the caber jack cadence armor. Um, and then the weapons, like you'll have actually the sort of standard caber, um, a couple of different cadence cabers, and then uh, all the all the relics and stuff will be in there. Can also switch to the uh, info. So this is where you can check out all the, the genetic traits that the character has. Um, and man, like this is, you know, one thing that we're learning is that these have, you know, there are so many, there's probably two dozen or something right now. And they have like, a, so far, yeah. some of them have like a one in 16 chance, some of them have one in 64 chance. But when you're rolling the dice that many times, they tend to have a lot of them that, that present themselves. So this is something we know that we're going to have to work on to, um, limit the number of traits that your starting heroes have mm. um, so that the game is like not too too crazy beginning. We also have this, which is fantastic, that you can rename your heroes. Uh, so look, it's Chad Dawson. Hey, what's up? You're looking good. Man. You won't be able to, yeah, look at this. Looking, yeah, looking real good. Look at these, I like the chops. I'm not looking too bad. Um, so, and also, the, you know, these screens are, so this is kind of cool that, you know, these screens, like, with the, you know, the tab view, this is exactly the stuff that we were showing you earlier, is that, like, oh, it's the tab view, and, like, this is, ah, cool. Um, it just looks, you know, it's just all temporary. Yeah, and it's worth noting, like, 
This is how we usually start the UI. Um, Dan's been doing most of the work on the stuff here on Strategy Layer. Uh, and it's pretty far along for being all pretty placeholder, but we'd like to get it functional so you can actually sort of play it while the artists are kind of working on that vision. And you're seeing some of the, you guys showed some of the great stuff that Derek's been doing on, you know, what a more final version might look like. <clears throat> but as the game's in flux and we're trying out new ideas, it's important that we keep it in this rough form so we can quickly change it yeah. mm -hmm. um, before we do the art on it. But Oh, I did not retire his art, his art's really inspiring to see what it's going to maybe eventually look like. Yeah. Um, oh, so this is cool. It's actually sorting um, all of our characters by XP because one of the most important things when you go to retire uh, a hero is that they can pass that XP along to the children as they're being raised. Um, so this is sorted by XP, but you'll see the yellow um, icons here. That's their, uh, their fertility. Um, and it's kind of interesting. I don't know if we have any in here, but we have some see traits <coughs> that alter fertility. Um, it looks seen. like it looks like we didn't really oh, get yeah. any of them here. We didn't did we? have any infertile. Yeah, interesting. People. And so the like uh, like there is an infertile trait, and that you know you get a red um, like a red symbol. So one of your house members there. Yep, is. Susan. We're gonna retire Susan. We'll have a house mirror. Look at that. Um, and then this is you know again we've shown this before. This is like the fertility combination. Um, so we'll put put Randy in there. He's got old bones though. Unfortunately, Feral's good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm finding when I'm doing the regents and partners that that's actually one of the cooler things to look at. It's like you know you're going to be pulling them off the battlefield. So what are you losing on the battlefield, right. and traits wise versus right. getting on? It's, and and it was a, it was a very simple change, but starting you with with heroes that go from level one to three <clears throat> out of ten actually makes those choices a lot more interesting because like you know during right. your first fight. Do you not want to have your your best guys? You know, we're we're putting that like right up front mm -hmm. at the very beginning of the game. It's super cool. Like we've I, talked about like that asthma trait, and we recently toned it down a little bit because it was getting crazy. But, yeah. You know, do you have a guy on the battlefield with asthma who's actually gonna like maybe make you lose the battle or slow you down, or do you put him in your house and then now everyone you have after that's gonna have asthma? Right. Like, right. Maybe you let the guy on the battlefield fight it out one last battle. And, you know. <laughs> so um, that was another thing that we learned. I, I don't know if anybody noticed that, but um, births don't stop the clock anymore. We had a lot of things that were stopping the clock, so um, the births actually don't, don't stop it anymore. Um, we just have this ticker, which is, again, another placeholder kind of UI element. Um, and I guess there is some... And the fireworks are still there. And the fireworks are still there. It's like totally pink, a temporary blue, effect, but we have pink, pink and blue fireworks. fireworks. You gotta keep the people happy. Um, yeah, it's very We also, we know, we know right now that our stuff. birth rates are like too high. If you look at this, there's like, they have like you know. six kids in diapers. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so like that's something that we're, we're gonna tone down. It's just, you know, not something we've gotten to. So hey, we have a cadence attack. Cool, we're gonna go to that. Um, so here, like, like um, also, this is really great. Like the gold, um, the gold text lets you know that they have a, a talent point to spend, um, which is which is really excellent. Nice hunter you got there. Um, so right. here, yeah, we're like messing with, you know, just again getting ready to go, launch this fight, um, and let's talk about some tactical things. Let's talk about some tactical things. So um, mainly, we want to focus on two things really quick uh, before we go. I want to talk about the caber jack. Um, so inside this guy, so again, like, like we want this UI to be totally portable so that you can, you can access all of this stuff. You won't be able to swap uh, equipment, but you might want to be able to read about it, check out the, um, the info screen to get all the detailed stats, and then also look at the stats, uh, or look at the, the skill tree. So one thing that's cool about this is that you might have a hero that's, um, and John really fought for this, and I think this is great, that if you have a hero who is um, on his last battle, he's like, He's like 85 and you're like, okay, there's no way he's gonna make it to the next one. But he's almost to level eight. And you deploy him and then he gets a kill and he levels up and he's all bam, level eight, and he gets a skill point. If you can't actually spend it in the tactical battle, he will never get to use that ability ever, you know? <coughs> so it's kind of rad that if that guy hits level eight in the fight, right. uh, he, gets his, he gets his little uh, ability point, you can spend it right then and benefit for the rest of the battle, and that's like, and that's a, super At least cool. in our current design, we're show, showing you the XP yep. on the guy, so you can kind of, you get that after each kill, you don't have yep. to wait till you the can, end, you end can end totally the gauge it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have quite a few things to show on the caber jack. I'm gonna cheat, <clears throat> I'm gonna cheat really quick. The top, yeah. 
and let this guy, we'll level this guy out. Actually, I can just add the skill points, right? That's the. Cool. And then we can just fill out his talent tree. So again, knockback attack, we'll show that in a minute, but that is your, uh, you know, pushing guys away. And then if they smash into things, that will, uh, has right now has a 100% chance of stunning them. So they'll lose all their action points for the next turn. Um, so if you set it up, it's pretty powerful. Also, we found knocking characters together and then using the AOE of the alchemist grenades on them is super, super powerful. That's like, that's been a really fun thing to mess around with. Um, so at this first, at this first tier, we have, um, the choice between two defensive passives. So over here we have stand ground. Um, it's like an HP, HP buff and then also makes you immune to knockback. So some of the enemies will also have that knockback ability which will be able to stun you and this will just make, make sure that when you, put, when you plant your cable jack somewhere, it's not gonna get pushed around anywhere. Somebody was actually asking earlier about if we're gonna have an analog to like the hunker down thing in XCOM, so. Oh, we actually do, so, so that's it's, another isn't thing. That, isn't that what is we were that, just looking at? Is that we do have um, kind of like level one abilities that you get for free that are not on the, the tree. And yeah. these are things that, oh, that kind of came out of playing the game where sometimes, this is a great example here, where it's like you've moved the character one, one of your moves, um, you don't necessarily want to move them again because there might be enemies and then they wouldn't be able to react. Um, so what do you do? You know, and with the with the caber jack, um, that skill is just going to be like a very simple defend skill that will let uh, put them in a, a more defensive stance. Um, You're out of points. Oh, I'm out of points. I can fix that. I can um, fix that, right? Yeah. Um, that work? that'll just put him into a defensive stance. We have this really excellent placeholder animation, really jacks up his armor um, and lets him take a bunch of hits, um, take like severely reduced damage for the, for the rest of the turn. Um, and it's on a several turn cooldown, but that would be something to do if you move him and you don't necessarily want to move him again. Um, going back in here, okay, so so the stand ground, like knockback immunity, rebound, um, I really dig this one. So whenever you eat a um, melee attack, it will knock back the target that hits you. So if you kind of position yourself correctly and you know that they're going to attack you, um, you can even bounce them back uh, into an obstacle or into another enemy and stun them um, during their turn, which is great. Um, so this is the, the two actives that we have. We have a charge <coughs> ability, which lets you dash over a really long distance. Um, and then uh, it will knock back the character that you smash into. And the amount of knockback that's delivered is, I think it's equal right now to the amount that you run. So if you have a super long, you know, if you sprint over eight squares and hit a hit an enemy, that enemy will get knocked back uh, eight squares and actually yeah. most likely smash into something and then get stunned. <clears throat> yep. Wow. But he could smash another enemy and then impart a lot of that momentum onto the enemy. And you can get some pretty cool, you can punt a guy quite a far ways right um, now if and you do it right. The other ability is like, um, so yeah, we, we kind of have a mix of like offensive and, and defensive things. So the charge is definitely more offensive, um, sends you pretty far uh, in one of the cardinal directions. Uh, the stun slam is just like an AOE attack that stuns all the characters in the eight squares around you. Um, so we'll just pick one of those. Um, so this one, we have uh, prime target, which is a way of, uh, it's kind of like a simple taunt that you would see in like, a, like an MMO kind of thing. Again, this is like, you know, trying to get more defensive and, and make sure that he's taking the damage with his high armor. Um, and then we have this friendly push ability, which is um, lets you knock back allies and have them not suffer the, the damage or the stun when they get pushed around. And this was one that I was sort of like, oh, I don't know if it's gonna be useful. It's totally useful. So far, like we've seen it, um, knocking one of your characters farther ahead so that they can then move and attack um, is super useful knocking one of your own characters into another enemy and then it'll stun the enemy and not stun your character. Like there's a lot of like different things that we've seen. Um, knocking one of your characters out of the way so then you can then uh, like do an AOE attack <coughs> in the space where they were. Uh, you can even knock around guys that are out of uh, action points. So somebody who's stunned, you can actually like push them out of the way and it's, it's, it's very cool. Um, and then this, this top passive is this uh, kill rage. So every time you kill something, you get another, um, another action point so you can actually um, especially if you're in close range, um, uh, like we have some swarmy enemies that we're, that we're looking at. we we'll be able to kill one, get another attack, kill another one, get another attack, kill another one, and just keep chaining them together. Um, sweet. And that is the highest one on this tier, so you probably wouldn't see that one until later, late game. Right, right. <clears throat> oh, so this, this is pretty awesome. Is this it right here? Right there, yeah. What do you think? Good, yeah. Time Maybe to charge. charge. 
position positioning. Did you get Let's it? See if I did it right. Nope. Right. Nope. Actually, one. Oh, I messed yeah. it up. You messed it up. Yeah. Are you, you gonna be able to path through that guy though? Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Next turn. Maybe. Yeah, you move. should. What you should do here is. Oh, he's gonna move. If you set yourself up so he couldn't see you and get right behind the geyser, you could let it drop and then hit him on the next turn. It'd be pretty sweet. It's kind of, it is kind of hard to judge these, uh, these the cardinal directions. Are tough. Yeah, the yeah. diagonals. So right so here would be good, here, though, right? Here. Yep, that looks good. Is that exactly where I was? Hilarious. Um, so this kind of, you pick a direction, you just go off in that direction as far as you can. Oh, whoa, what happened there? What just exploded? <laughs> what something? Oh, he, he, got he some ran bugs. into it. Does the, the corrosion guys blow up when they <laughs> die now? I don't know. That was amazing. And there's, it looks like there are two enemies in the same spot. So we've got a couple of bugs. <laughs> you know, a couple of bugs. It's weird. It could happen. It could happen. Actual bugs. They've been known to happen. No more eyes on the game. <laughs> more bugs that pop up. Good Indeed. test, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. And it, of course, that's the uh, cardinal rule of game development. As soon as the more people that you're demoing a feature for in development, the more it's going to break. Like, absolutely, that is like how it works. Um, we've also been doing a lot of work, Chad, <coughs> Chad has been grenades. doing a lot of work on the uh, alchemist, alchemist grenades. Um, so we'll show those off right now. So this is, for the alchemist, that's the ability that they'll get um, that's not in their tree. Um, and they get, that thing exploded so, again. Just exploded. <laughs> Amazing. Why they blow it up it's a weird there. VF. I don't know. That was, um, it might have been, it might have been, uh, Patrick might be though. messing around with that, that uh, corrosion guy. We'll see. Oh boy. Oh, he's fine. So you could talk a little bit about the geysers. I guess we showed those off before. About how they work with the rising and falling. Yep, and they'll, um, you'll see them change at the beginning of your turn, and then they'll stay that way through the enemy turn. So I know that there's a dude back there. And this is actually a problem that we have to solve, is that like, the UI is giving you a little bit too much information right now. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, there's some cool stuff here. Like, like, so I've got, I've got some hunter, like, I've got a hunter right here. So if I run this caber jack up here, and then uh, do a knockback attack on this dude, send him flying out, and now my hunter has like a clear shot at him. Nice. It's pretty rad, like there's, there's a it's bunch of stuff. Pro moves <laughs> There's uh, another thing that I enjoy. Is this guy lined up? He's not. I don't know. There's just so it's it's pretty cool. Like uh, that you know, we try to put things in the game that that we don't necessarily know exactly how somebody's going to use all these things. Um, also allowing you to use things on uh, friendlies and enemies um, always is always a big bonus. Like I always like things like that. Um, so we'll take the other ones that we haven't used yet. Stand ground, stun slam, plus one of those out. And target. Cool. Yeah. There it is, right there, right? Oh. Oh, so um, Patrick is testing <laughs> the swapper ability on the caber jack. So he totally is. Can I? That's, can I that use that? App? I have not seen if this is going to. Oh, great. amazing! We so try it. one of one of our enemies, <laughs> the um, the giant blue forgetful demon has this uh, swap ability. Did it work? <laughs> uh, so that's kind of rad. Yes. Like that's, that's a preview of like what's to come. But um, we're hoping that that's like a really awesome ability for an enemy to have. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Cool, cool. Um, that was really we've cool. We've been doing a lot, of, a lot of work on grenades, although I, can't, I won't be able to throw the, it over here, will I? No. Because these, these geysers, when they're up, they're they tall, count so. as talls. You get rid of that thing in the middle, though. That's a medium. So, uh, so, so with the stand, grenade, you stand can on the see other side of that medium thing. Where, over here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. This it's will be a nice. A good location. This will be a nice showcase of it. Is that these medium blockers? Like they block, uh, they block line of sight and they block um, the direct attacks from the hunter. But the arc attacks of, of these, you can chuck it right over there. Cool. Um, you can throw it, I think that we have it dialed in at six, or is it seven squares that you can throw it away, something like that. And um, the, your accuracy falls off as you, as you try to throw it longer. So close range, you have like 100% to, to hit, um, but longer it's gonna go down, so only 68. And I think that this has actually been pretty fun 
um, when you miss, uh, the grenade actually, so I actually hit that time, but when you do miss, <laughs> Oh, you know oh, what that is? I know what that is. It's a shell armor. Yeah, that's the oh, shell. Oh, that's okay. cool. That's why you said you had two guys. I was like, yep. oh, okay. I didn't think that. Yeah, all right. So you need. We have features in this game. Yeah, we've we got, got, got a bunch of game. features that are coming in coming in <laughs> super hot that I did not think were actually in here, but that's oh, amazing. Did you want to talk about his ability? Up, yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. And so he's cool. got a buff. So you see the buff, um, the chevron. So uh, this guy, when he gets hit, he kind of, it's like his, it's like airbags. He kind of like, his armor puffs up and he becomes. Target him and grab the info on him. Yeah, it'd be oh, interesting. I, yeah. I don't know if I can target the other guy. Uh, oh, I can't. Okay, sure. So, Maybe you see his armor is 100. Defense. So basically, you're not going to be able to do more than one damage to him after his shell is up, but it's going to drop at the end of the next turn. So, you see there, yeah, just one damage. But at the end of the turn, it pops back oh, and crashes no. the game. Oh, no! Uh, that's it. That's that, there that's it is. that bug. We've seen this. Oh, We're we trying know to bug, so we know how to fix Excellent. it. We know, how, right. we know how to do it. All right, rad. Minus. Games, games in development. We got a, a repro on it. Video games. I know how to repro it. Oh, we're okay. Um, so I think we're gonna shut this thing down after that. <laughs> <laughs> We've got all sorts of unknown nice natural new features that are place. like that are like jamming themselves into the game. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that we'll. If you've got any questions, we really do have to run. There's some other like important studio shenanigans that are happening that we've got to run off to. But um, if you've got questions, like post them in the forums. Um, yeah, I'll link to the thread right now. This is kind of the team update thread. Yep. And some people have asked for us to, you know, like um, maybe give some notes on these things. I don't know if we're gonna have time to do that, but we definitely can talk about this team stream in the forum. And, and here's we'll be, the uh, link right here. We'll be more active in that thread, answering questions. Dan and Chad, thanks for the great work. Yeah, it's thank you. Really good. Thanks for the great design. Um, Thanks for the bug finding. We'll show we'll show more of the game next time. Like I really wanted it to be longer, but we did you know flapped our gums about art for a while. So, uh, but we'll definitely show more of it next time. Um, it's actually coming together to the point where it feels like a real video game now. You know, you're I played retiring it all weekend. Dudes, you have it was babies, awesome. Like actually doing tactical battles, and then the effects of those tactical battles come back into into <clears> the game. It's I mean it's really great to see you character and strategy, play tactical, level up, get a few points, you know, time progresses, he goes back into battle, now he's level two. You're starting to get that connection, I think, with the characters yeah. more. It's cool, and uh, a lot of people on the team played the game on Friday for a really long time, and we started to see some people getting sort of attached to their, to their heroes, you know? Um, it's super rad. Derek. And then, yeah, Derek did, and then one of his characters <laughs> died of old age, and he was like super bummed out about it. And that's really great, so. Yeah, we'll see, but um, we'll be back in a couple of weeks um, with more team stream stuff, and uh, we'll be answering more questions on that. So uh, thanks for joining us. And there's some super secret stuff happening tomorrow. So yeah. stay tuned. To we'll be secret tuned. for long. You should stay like, tuned for secret look at stuff. The interwebs. Good stuff. So see you. Thanks for joining us. Team Stream 16, see you next time. <laughs>